My name is G Easy. I'm from Oakland, California, and um, I'm, just a, I'm just a kid that likes making music. Um, I go to college in New Orleans, and I'm just trying to, you know, make something of it. While I went to build a boat, fool, you were probably they both like both the Bay Area and, and New Orleans have like a really distinct music scene, you know. So I grew up during the hype movement in the Bay Area, and the Bay Area really is like a, a sub market to itself. I mean, it's got its own scene, like so coming up in that, that was the inspiration, like Mac Dre, E40, you know, like Keep the Sneak, and that, that whole style, that whole culture, that whole sound, you know, that. So when I got to New Orleans. You know, I was so heavy into that. I came out in New Orleans and they were like, what are you talking about? You know, like, what are you listening to? And I mean, it's just like anything else, you're inspired and influenced by what you're around. So, you know, you live in New Orleans long enough, you get to experience that. But, uh, I mean, New Orleans, you've got, you've got so many different styles of music. Right? You got brass music, you know, you got bounce music that's like just really like up tempo function. It's not all too dissimilar to high beats. You know, I mean, so it's just like I try to take bits and pieces of, you know, what I'm around and soak it all up and try to make something unique out of it. Yes and no. Like, my little brother um, followed me to Loyola and he's a. Uh, I mean, he's like real heavy into jazz. He's a music major with a focus on trumpet. So, you know, I go out and watch him play at like, you know, jazz bars and stuff. But I mean, it's not necessarily like the stuff I'm sampling or like most influenced on by now, right now, I'm influenced by right now. But like, you know, I appreciate it. Well, I mean, I've always been interested in like 50s and 60s pop music. I just think like that's a really cool time period. Um, my mom raised me listening to the Beatles, you know, I mean, so I'm into like, I, I'm into that whole, I'm into that whole sound. It was ironically enough, like, we were, uh, we were in the band on a, on a previous tour we did, and we just used to play Pandora stations, and like, I mean, to get us through the drives, you know, and one of our favorite stations was Beach Boys Radio, and like, it's an awesome station with great songs. <laughs> And like something kind of clicked when I was listening to the Beach Boys Pandora. I was like, all of these songs, all of these 60s pop songs, these like surf rock, like, you know, feel good, like, has something in common with like today's kind of like pop, indie, you know, hip hop. Like, what was going on today is that like I could take this sound, it's, you know, it's still relative to like what's going on today. And I can just flip it and kind of modernize it and, and like put hip hop drums to it and rap over it and tell a similar story. Like Run Around Sue is just a story about like, you know, a slutty girl. Like that's still relative today to be able to take that, modernize it and put my spin on it. And I don't know, it started this out as like an experimental project. It'd be fun to just grab a bunch of 60s pop songs and flip them. And it, you know, it kind of just went from there and I got really into it. And it, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, that kind of goes with what I just said. Endless Summer was a project that worked on this summer where, for the first time, um, I set myself up in a situation where you know, I didn't have a summer job. I didn't have any big tour that summer. I literally could wake up every day and, you know, make my coffee, sit down at the computer and start making music. And, I mean, that's, ask any musician that's like a dream we always like. You know, for it. It's just being able to make music all day. So for me, it was an experience to be able to experiment and like try new styles and sounds and stuff like that. And I just really got into the, to the sampling of 60s pop music. And like one thing led to another, it just flowed really easily and it came together naturally. And I, I think I did like like nine of them on in the summer. Uh, I like to, I mean, for me, like, that's, that's half of my style, that's half of my sound, my brand, my everything. Like, and I like having creative control over a track, you know? It's like, I'm really anal about, you know, putting my whole thing together. Like, if, if the snare isn't hitting right, after nine hours already working on it, I'm willing at 3 a.m. to go back and, like, really work on the cueing that snare and making it right. Exactly. Whereas, if you're working with somebody else, you know, like, you may not share that same kind of drive to get it just perfect. So, I don't know. I just, I like doing it all myself as much as possible. The thing is, I mean, I don't think I ever want to be an artist that you can just put in one box and it'll stay there for his whole career. 
You know, I mean, probably one of my biggest inspirations, like one of my idols is Kanye West. And you look at him, album to album to album, he's evolved, you know, his style, his sound, his fashion sense, everything. And I think, you know, I mean, rappers can kind of like go out on a limb sometimes and compare themselves to like, you know, famous visual artists of the 20th century. And sometimes it's a little outlandish, but just to put it out there, you look at Picasso's work, like his early stuff, you know, versus where it started to get like, and it's just like, an artist gets to evolve and that's great. You know, I don't think you should be stuck in that same style or the same, you know, spot for like your whole career. I think you should be able to try something new and take risks. And that's what I've tried to do. Well, I mean, to me, the reason why I do something like that is like, take Waspy for example. I think like Waspy was a popular song that I put out. And I knew Endless Summer was gonna be a big tape. You know, and I wanted it to get more recognition. I felt like each with each tape I put out, more people are gonna listen. You know, so I'll take the song that was popular from the last one and, and bring it to the next tape. If it fits in cohesively. Waspy to me, like I sampled the band Tennis and, and their whole style was kinda like recreating that same 60s pop feel that I was sampling from. So, you know, their sample fit right in next to Neon, next to the Beach Boys, you know. So that like it just felt natural and it was just a song I wanted to share with you. <laughs> That's a really tough one. Um, I mean most of the time I'd honestly tell you whatever song I've made most recently. Um, just because like I get so excited about new projects, you know, and when I'm making something when I'm in a moment, like I'm like, yo, this is it. This is gonna be that song. People are gonna flip when they hear this. And I'm like, you know, I get all like hyped up and I send it off to like my people to hear what they think. So I mean, quite honestly, if you want to know what my favorite song I've ever done is the song that hasn't come out yet. Like I was working on yesterday, trying to finish up before this tour. And like I didn't get it quite finished and I had to like decide if I wanted to rush it and release it while I was on tour. Or like save it, take my time, finish writing it on the road, finish recording it when I'm back home. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always working on stuff, like, to be honest, I kind of have, like, kind of bad anxiety issues when I'm not working and when I'm not getting stuff done, you know, hopefully it'll turn out to be something that's productive but not destructive, you know, I mean, there's some mornings where I wake up literally so anxious that I can't sleep and it's like 6 a.m., you know, like, I should be sleeping in, but I'm worrying about, like, man, a month has passed by and I haven't released a song, I haven't, I don't have any new stuff up, you know, I need to get this done, I need to get that done, um, so to me, it, it's just kind of almost like therapeutic for me to be constantly recording and expressing myself through, like, working on new stuff, just getting it out, I feel like I have a window open right now, you know, I'm really fortunate that people are listening, and people are paying attention, like, you guys want to come interview, you know, like, it wasn't always that way, so now that people are watching, I want to make the most of it, and not just sleep through it. Just... No, I mean there is some of that. There is some of that, but um, I'm actually working on a on a, on a mixtape and a retail EP. I really want to get something on iTunes, like original. I don't want to rely so heavily on samples. The thing about samples is that they'll keep a rapper broke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like getting that clearance and getting it, you know, it's tough. So the ceiling is kind of small for like a song with a sample in it. So ultimately I'm trying to like, you know, yeah, do more original work. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting the role racist is playing in hip hop right now. You've got like more white rappers than ever before. And like, I was talking to my friend Teddy Allen about it and like, it almost feels like the term white rapper is like disintegrating. It's just like, and he was saying that he didn't feel that way. He thought it's even more so now, and it's like more pressure to do something different and to stand out and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know, it's an interesting situation. I just think more people are making music. Technology's opened the door for everybody. And then he was just like, gee, it's like this. Like, we're all stealing other people's music, you know, by sampling it and not clearing it and stuff like that. And it's like whether or not Drake got the idea from you or like heard your CD or whatever. I mean, it's not even Drake. You can't put it on him. It's Forty, the producer that made it. And like, I mean, I I toured with them. Like, I gave them the outsider CD. Like, whether or not he listened to it, heard it on there, and got the idea from that, or whether he just randomly came up with it. 
it's not really a big deal. I mean, I just think it's cool we had, you know, we both had the same taste and idea to sample it. Swag me out! What's up, Boston? I hope y'all go hard tonight. I'm fucking stoked for this show. Shout out to Guy Glor. Appreciate y'all interviewing me. Taking the time out. Couldn't even tell me to my face. Had to text it. You can pack your bags. Follow signs to the exit. Yes, move it along, please, pronto. Oh, and by the way, return your keys to the gundo. If you played at the Apollo, you'd be the type of act that I would boo off stage while I throw you 